Greetings and welcome to the Church of St. Mary in Long Sutton, Lincolnshire. History claims that Long Sutton Church, belonging to the monks of Castle Acre in Norfolk, was rebuilt in the 1170s by Lady Nicola de la Hare to rival neighbouring Waplode. See that church in my list. Lady Nicola was a friend to King John and hereditary constable of Lincoln Castle. She took the post seriously and personally supervised the castle's defence against the barons rebelling against the king. After John's death at Newark in 1216, she continued to defend it for his son, Henry III. This 162-foot spire is attributed to be the oldest and best preserved wooden spire in Britain. This tower was built detached from the church, resting on a set of open arches which may have been used possibly for a market. These were filled in for stability during the 18th century. The upper stages of the tower have blind arcading, the spire rising directly and without any parapet in the early Gothic fashion. This transformation of square tower into octagonal lead spire with four balancing turrets gives Long Sutton its charm. Son omnibus lucet. Let there be sunshine for everyone. Not only is this spire the oldest, tallest wooden spire in Britain, but it is the tallest in Europe, carbon dated in 1970 to be 1200 AD. It was used as the model for Salisbury Cathedral. And crowded with Georgian headstones, those near the south door boast Baroque cartouches and Rococo coping as if each were seeking to outdo the next. This is the original rounded Norman apse squared off in 1260 to include the monk's cell. The financing of the later work has been attributed to an even more distinguished owner of the Sutton Manor, John of Gaunt. Remember your A-level English, Richard II? Old John of Gaunt, time-honoured Lancaster, hast thou according to thy oath and bond brought hither that land, so on and so forth. He was the occasional resident at the neighbouring Bolingbroke Castle. Such patronage at the height of the Middle Ages gave the churches of the Fens a splendour to rival that of the Cotswolds. Records tell of five altars at Long Sutton, paid for by the Castle Acre Priory and four by local guilds, supporting a total of 18 priests in all. Of this little survives, but in the south chancel aisle is medieval glass, including a superb image of St. George and the Dragon. Entering through the early 14th century porch, look up at the roof bosses in the ceiling. 
One of a phoenix pecking out its own heart is an early symbol of the resurrection. You can see the steps leading to the 14th century Parvais room where the first Long Sutton school was started. Originally, the Parvais room on the first floor was used as a monastic scriptorium. In Victorian times, the same room was used as a pre-training priest school. The church interior is Norman and big, big enough not to have required rebuilding as the population grew in size and wealth. But it was heightened with a perpendicular clear story set on top of the old Norman clear story, which became the middle stage in a three tier elevation. The aisles here were also heightened, their roofs reaching to the top of the Norman work, as can be seen in the string course. This Norman core is like a set of stage props around which decorated and perpendicular masons supplied a theatre. There was originally a rood light here, illuminating the great rood or crucifix flanked by images of the Virgin and St John, which surmounted the rood loft gallery spanning the chancel arch. In about 1510, the chancel had been given a splendid new hammer beam roof decorated with tiers of angels bearing the instruments of the passion the cross, the ladder, crowns of thorns and other symbols, clearly a source of great pride to parishioners, but radical religious and political changes were looming over which they had little control. These changes, collectively known as the Reformation, would eventually transform the Roman Catholic Church in England into a Protestant church. Their impact on church furnishings and interiors was cataclysmic, and during the rapid fluctuations in royal policy between 1547 and 1559, confusion must have been rife, not only here in Long Sutton, but throughout Lincolnshire and indeed all England. Thus, under the Protestant government of King Edward VI, the Sutton church wardens were ordered to remove all Popish Roman Catholic abuses. Then, under the Roman Catholic Queen Mary, they were commanded to be put back again, only to be removed 
when Protestantism was re-established, this time permanently, by Queen Elizabeth in 1559. In 1567, Sutton parishioners could scarcely have recognised the church interior that they'd scarcely known 20 years earlier. Gone were their images of saints, gone their seven stone altars, to be replaced by a single wooden communion table. The idolatrous instruments of the Passion had been hacked from their hammer beam roofs, along with many of its saints and angels. Most notably of the great rude loft, with its crucifix, which had been torn down, leaving as evidence only the stair, whose entrance can still be seen behind the pulpit. Jump ahead 200 years, everything had changed again. The Georgian interior of Long Sutton would be unfamiliar both to earlier and, even more so, later worshippers there. By 1767, St Mary's was a prayer book church, a church that is fully equipped for Protestant worship according to the book of common prayer and which focused on the word of God preached from the pulpit rather than the sacraments dispensed from an altar. Here you can take the opportunity to look at the newly restored medieval wall paintings which date to the 1200s. The whole church was covered with them until they were removed in the 1840s. Sometime after the building of the tower and spire came the curious small monk's cell, referred to as a two-storey vestry. It's thought to have been a resting place for monks or pilgrims visiting or passing through the area. These stained glass windows are Victorian. The Reredos here is a fine stone and alabaster carving of the Last Supper. Alas, poor Bailey! This large stone in the floor commemorates Dr John Bailey, a popular town surgeon of Long Sutton who was robbed and murdered on the Tid Goat Road during the nights of the 21st to the 22nd of April 1795. This is a 17th century Jacobean poor box inscribed, Remember the poor? Simple in form, this is a Norman octagonal font. Thank you for watching this film of the beautiful Church of St Mary's in Long Sutton.